In blood I am born. In battle do I live. In light do I rise. In darkness do I fall. The sons of Sanguinius harbor many burdens in the name of their gene father. Noble and relentless in their persecution of the threats to his Imperium, the angel's grace extends not only in his noble countenance, but his inner rage. For today, we shall elucidate an Astartes of the blood, afflicted with the gene curse of his chapter. The Dower Sergeant of the Sword of Baal, Kazarion. It is an honor for any Space Marine to serve under the ranks of the Death Watch. For only the finest warriors from each Space Marine chapter are picked to serve the kill teams of such a holy order. Tailoring each battle company, squad, and battalion as weapons against the darkness with the keen edge of each chapter's unique customs, rituals, and training, the Death Watch are the bulwark against the most deadly of Xenos threats. But for every man who serves, he brings a burden to bear. And not all burdens are weighted equal. Sergeant Kazarion would serve his duty to the Watch with resentful, bitter distinction. Afflicted as all Blood Angels are, with the Red First and temptations of the Black Rage, he would suffer more than most who wear the Black of Duty. Though with every scar earned through bloody battle, Kazarion would cut a path of righteous fury through the Xenos. Earning valuable knowledge and insight of the heinous forces whom would threaten his chapter and humanity itself. Kazarion would be plagued with the Red First and the beginning stages of the Black Rage. The psychic maladies further bolstered by the death of the Blood Angels chapter primarch, Sanguinius. The ghostly apparition of their chapter's darkest hour against the War Master would plague Kazarion's mind. For those afflicted by the Black Rage, be they Blood Angel or any number of their successor chapters, can become paralyzed with the shocking barbaric bloodlust of the arch traitor Horus's slaughter, an act that would damn the Imperium to slow degeneration for all time. Kazarion would shoulder this burden alone. Without the support of his brothers in blood, Kazarion would become tormented by the curse of his bloodline. Steadily descending down the rungs of madness, uniquely plagued by the Blood Angels chapter until his service to the Death Watch would be concluded. Kazarion's time in the Death Watch would nonetheless prove to be invaluable, despite the perilous cost spent to earn him such experience. A marine with few peers within his own chapter, Kazarion would be specially suited to purge all manner of deviant Xenos and heretics under the thrall of the enemies of humanity. Exacting, strategic, and characteristically pragmatic, Kazarion is not a soul to be considered optimistic. Rather, Kazarion exacts the Emperor's judgment, fully grounded in the knowledge that his will demands not idealism, only duty. To his brother Astartes, Kazarion is seen as cold, gleaning only the most fatalistic outcome to each situation. Failing to understand the burden of command he bears in the face of the galaxy's worst terrors. Equipped with armaments rewarded by his service as a member of the Death Watch, Kazarion is a deadly combatant. Earning his brother's respect for his leadership and tactical prowess despite his nature. Oftentimes contrasting with his lapses in defiance to his gene flaw, Kazarion walks the narrow path of leading his men into the most dangerous of battles, whilst tormented by the demons entrenched inside his mind. With the skirmish of the planet of Naiades, further testing Kazarion's resolve. Chapter Master Dante would command several fleets of the Blood Angels to combat the Tyranid Xenos to prevent them laying siege to the Baal system. Within the Viltri system, one of many Blood Angels' fleets would confront the Devourer. Led by the battleship, Judgment, the fleet would stand against the Tyranid Hive ship and its accursed spawn. With the Judgment's destruction, Kazarion would be left adrift within the wreckage. 
saved by his battle brothers during the engagement, Kazarion would be transported to the Sword of Baal via Thunderhawk gunship prior to their escape from the war zone. Summoned to return to Baal, the Blood Angels would attempt to traverse the warp to return to their chapter world. Yet with the birth of the Great Rift across the galaxy, the Angels of Death would be thrown off course. Arriving at the Naiades system, both battle-wearied and reliant on only a handful of their depleted chapter. Receiving a transmission from the inner depths of the world of Naiades, Captain Orfeo would not risk his battle brothers needlessly and deem himself to be the best suited to confront the unknown. With their captain lost and the majority of their brothers relegated to the scraps of gene seeds ripped from their cold corpses, the angels would divide their remaining forces into two battle squadrons. Led by their only senior officers, Sergeants Ancaeus and Kazarion, the Astartes of the Sword of Baal would descend upon Naiades' hive. Separated, the Astartes under Kazarion's command, Tiro, Koro, Sangrael, and Armino would investigate the vandalized and desolate hive. Confronted by seemingly human soldiers of the Astra Militarum, Kazarion's perception and experience within the Death Watch would prove invaluable. Recognizing the subtle signs of the Gene Stealer cult, Kazarion would command his squad to engage the soldiers. Revealing themselves to be enthralled by Tyranids, the Astartes would lay waste to the heretics. Reuniting with Ancaeus's squad, the Angels of Death would further push through the city until finding the desolation of Orpheus Honor Guard. Their Thunderhawk gunship destroyed and bodies littering the barren soil, Kazarion would use his hard-won experience to follow the tracks left by the fallen dead. Delving into the tunnels of Naiades, the Astartes would find Orpheus' severed arm and power sword. Resolving to explore further until finding their wounded captain, the Astartes would be set upon by the foul mutants. Driven mad by the death of his fallen battle brother, Koro, Kazarion would partially succumb to his inner rage. Butchering his enemies with unbridled wrath, Chaplain Raphael would attempt to prevent Kazarion from falling victim to the curse's bloodlust. Yet alongside Koro and Virgilio, Raphael would be slain, further sending Kazarion into his fit of rage. As the blood of mutants spilled across his chainsword, Kazarion would revel in his anger. Barely staying his hand from cutting down his stalwart brother, Ancaeus, Kazarion's rage would relent. Consumed with grief at the loss of Raphael and his battle brothers, Kazarion would become immobilized from the battle. Comforted by the words of Ancaeus, Kazarion would muster his inner strength and stand beside his brothers. Seemingly fated to die within the tunnels, the Astartes would be saved with the actions of Magos Dominus Castiophata IX and her heavily armed servitors. Guided to the base of the Tower of Naiades by the Adept of Mars, the Astartes would be led to their battle scarred captain, Orpheo. Fighting under his inspiring presence once more, the Astartes of the Blood Angels would carve a path to the peak of the Tower of Naiades to confront the Patriarch of the Tyranid Menace. Leading his kill team of Ancaeus, Melchior, Armino and Pallidus into the lair of the Tyranid Patriarch, they would face the foul creature with Blade and Bolter. As Ancaeus prevented the heretical cultist witch from fleeing, Kazarion and his men would battle the Xenos. As the Patriarch slew Pallidus, Armino and Virgilio, Kazarion would be tempted to once more delve into his bloodlust. Denying his inner demons, Kazarion would fight the Patriarch with honor and discipline, yet be wounded and rendered unconscious in the resultant melee. Returning to his slain brothers, Sergeant Ancaeus would succumb to the Black Rage and face the Patriarch. Slaying the beast while empowered by the Angel's wrath, Ancaeus would not survive his grievous wounds received in battle. Awakening to find his brothers slain, Kazarion would honor their sacrifice and lead the survivors of the Battle of Naiades to retrieve the honored dead and return to the Sword of Baal. Given command of the vessel due to Captain Orpheo's grievous wounds, Kazarion would lay to rest 
the armaments of his slain brothers. Resolving to honor their memory by enduring through the storms to come, and to stave off his chapter's curse in their name. Even now, our father wrote, even now amongst the stars, there are heroes whose tales will never be told. Angels whose legacy is naught but ash. Know this, my sons. The blood of those heroes remains priceless, though it was spent in silence. Remember these words. Remember them always as you sail into the dark. With that truth carved into our hearts now, we set sail for Baal. We set sail for home. This has been a tale of the great Imperium of Man, read by the Remembrancer. I hope you have enjoyed the transmissions for Angels of Death Semba, honoring the deeds of the Astartes of the Blood. For a new year dawns in the name of his Imperium, and more remembrance is due for many honored battle brothers. I shall endeavor to elucidate all who served with dignity, honor, and wrath in the name of his Imperium, whether their duty is ended or merely just begun. <laughs>